All right, so let's get to the manual. We can see everything that's included and there's not too many parts. So putting this thing together should be quite simple. So for step one, we got to put the main gantry, which is the upper portion of the printer onto the base. And here it shows you kind of how it goes. And the bottom picture there shows you that underneath. And here you can see the slots where the gantry will sit in. There are bolts already that are kind of pre-mounted there and they go through and that's what's going to connect it. So let's go ahead and grab that. So yeah, it's just going to sit right here into the slots. It's going to kind of fall in there just like that. We'll grab our included Allen wrench and now we can either pick it up with our hand, run the bolts in, or you can just kind of go off the edge of the table. You don't have to lift it or better yet, you can grab something and put it underneath the printer and that'll hold it. So yeah, not very hard guys. So we're going to run these two main bolts all the way up, but I'm not going to tighten it yet. I'm just going to snug them a little bit. All right. Same thing here. All right. So now we can go ahead and tighten them up really good and make sure you do that because we do have a really short wrench. So there's not much leverage. Definitely snug it up nicely because these two bolts are the only thing that's holding it. There's no other bracing. And actually guys, I just realized something that was probably quite important that because we started with the other side, I didn't even notice, but we did have a plug that automatically just kind of fits in where it goes right there. So yeah, that looks fine. So make sure when you're putting it in that, you know, that plug is plugging in, but there's no other way to put it in. So no matter how you do it, it's gonna, you know, connect to the other end. But yeah, maybe be a little more cautious than I was. All right, so this side's pretty tight. Let's go back to the other side and tighten those up. But to be honest, I wish there was a little bit more bracing, maybe some bolts here through the side that go into the channel also. But yeah, it looks like they're okay with just four bolts there. And there we go. So, so far guys, this is not very hard installation. So we got our main gantry on and it seems to be pretty good. Yeah, let's move to the next step, which is the spool holder. And we can see here how it goes together and then it goes on top. And it looks like mounts with just one little knob there. All right, so let's grab our brackets. You guys can see that one of them has that knob. So they come together like this, but they need to be the opposite with the filament detector on the inside. And so these things here will go in between the frames like this. And in the baggie of the Allen wrenches are the four bolts that we need. You guys can see the inserts have threads in it. So we're gonna grab a bolt, put it through the hole, and then we'll screw it into the metal part just like that. And I guess we can take these off for now. But yeah, we got one piece there and the other one will go here. So you do have a couple options, I guess, if you have smaller spools maybe, but they do show here just like that. Now we're gonna put the sleeves back on and then we'll grab the other side, put it on top of that. And then the two bolts that'll hold that. So yeah, guys, they went all out and redesigned this pull holder. It's interesting to see how some companies take the time to think things through and then others just kind of slap a piece of plastic and you roll on that. So this is kind of like a smooth roll here because it's metal on plastic, but it feels like it's almost like bearings but there's ever so slightly some friction, which is also good because when you have retractions or just movements when the nozzle moves around, you know, it could sometimes jerk the filament where if it rolls too easy, it'll just roll right out. So, all right, hopefully you guys can see that pretty well, but yeah, there's some slots here. I'm gonna unscrew this knob completely, take it out. And then it's literally gonna just sit right into the slot here, right in the middle. So, and what's interesting is actually it's not adjustable here. So I guess this is a permanent mount. So anywhere you go is a permanent mount. So. Yeah, I guess we'll go in the middle, makes sense. And then we'll put this little knob right here and that's gonna keep it from coming out. So it's already not sliding side to side, but yeah, we're way up here guys. And right off the bat, I can tell you that there is some wobble up here. Not sure if that's a good thing, but I wish they would have made some kind of bracing. Even would have been nice to have some kind of rods from here down, so in any case. So if you guys look over here while we're up here, let's go ahead and plug in this sensor. So the wire just feeds out from the back and we're gonna go ahead and plug this in. There we go. So yeah, for the next part guys, looks like we just need to plug everything in and then do some more adjusting. And that is it for the build, which as you guys can see was very simple. So we plugged the filament detector in and there's actually only a few more things we need to plug in. So looking here at the back of the printer, we can see we have some plugs here. So there's a white plug that'll plug in right there. And that's actually the filament detector coming down from the top. Okay, so we got a motor plug here, which is a black plug that plugs into the motor just like that and here on the other side it's somewhat the same thing we got the motor plug and then we have another plug here that comes out and as far as i can tell it doesn't really go to anything or at least i can't see where it goes to at the moment so we'll leave it alone for now but yeah that's pretty much all the plugging in all right since we're back here let's go ahead and check and adjust a few things but there are a couple zip ties here i'm going to go ahead and cut them they're holding the z axes from going up and down to protect it during shipping 
But yeah, if we turn this, we should be able to move it up and down now. So what we need to look at here are the wheels. So there's two here and one on the inside, same way on the other side. And then we got the hot end here that rolls on three wheels here. Definitely is too tight. And these are pretty good, maybe a little tight. And so the way you adjust this, since you can't get to it is, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a little set screw right there and you're just gonna use an Allen wrench and that's how you adjust the tension on these wheels so depending you know if you want more or less like right now I loosened it a lot and it's kind of wobbling so maybe I'll tighten it back a bit and that's probably good right there so yeah I can still spin the wheels they're a little tough to spin but that's okay the point here is that you know you can still spin them but yeah that's not too bad and pretty unique way I've never seen it to be adjusted like this yeah so that feels good right there on both of those so let's go ahead and adjust the direct drive extruder which includes everything including the hot end so let's go ahead and move it up a bit so I am too tight. I can feel it, you know, kind of bouncing around on the rail. So let's go ahead and grab our wrench and loosen the eccentric nut, which is under here. So these are stationary and this one's adjustable. And we're going to loosen it just a bit, whatever way that is. Okay, it's this way. Okay, so that feels pretty good right there. Let's see. Yep, how it rolls. Okay, much better. So because this is a direct drive and it has the extruder motor and everything in it, you know, you don't want to make this too loose. Usually I recommend, you know, making this as loose as possible. But for this one, you definitely want it pretty loose, but you want it to be firm. So not easily, you know, persuaded. Yeah, that looks good right there. So I can still spin my wheels quite easy. There is some friction to it too. So, and as it runs around back and forth, it's going to, you know, level itself out as these wheels continue to move around back and forth. All right. Well, that feels good there. And we've adjusted our bed already so yeah we're officially done with the assembly process and the artillery made it very simple to put this thing together 